How do we? Not bad damage rolls. Yeah. Oh, never mind. They are bad. Uh, the first, the first one's at three and two. Or your second one. Oh, I'm not sure. Turn on the, the two hit aren't working right because they rolled 21 two times in a row. I was like, I don't trust that. And then we're fine. Oh, wait. That's the wrong book. That's, uh, Quentin yeah, saying fuck you to everyone. <clears throat> so, let's get into it. Shall we? We shall. Mm -hmm. What happened last time? Uh, where did it start? Did it start with the Heartland crew? Or did it start it started with no. Jars? It started yeah, with Jars and Heartland. Mystery now. Adventure, right? Uh, we, yeah, yeah we adventure. all walked through the Sindel door. Uh, said farewell to the stalkers. Uh, Keenan decided that he was going to sort of uh, give up the stalker gig and um, uh, even gave his, his cut to uh, his, his, his team. Uh, and decided to become a, a man of the cloth here in Sindel. Um, the, the main crew uh, walked back to the Sindel Keep. I don't know if it has its own name, but... It um, does, but I don't think anyone's ever asked. <laughs> so therefore you guys don't know it. Whoopsie. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. You guys were there for, like, all of, like... Including the time going up those damn stairs and down those damn stairs 30 minutes. Yeah, I think, I think Al Alistair will just Google it a session. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we went back to the keep. Uh, Alistair did ask after um, uh, the, the Risewell banner hanging in the um, uh, the keep. And uh, I think I remember what the answer was. Basically, uh, every uh, noble house... Um, uh, played some small part. Uh, but what was it in the re resurrection of the king? No. So, um, the nobility gave all those banners. Probably like ninety nine percent of them had nothing to do with the actual like occurrence. Mm -hmm. It's more of a giving thanks, okay. recognize recognition of service, even though that service is absolutely shrouded in secrecy. Um, it wasn't based on the resurrection of the king. It was just uh, based on a unstated event. Okay. Service, duty, oath, whatever you want to determine it as, to uh, the the Lord of the Keep, mm -hmm. who was not who was not present to greet you guys. Right, and we uh, also didn't ask after him. So uh, anyway, uh, then we uh, we bounced back to Duvros, and that's when we <clears throat> sort of cut to Sajar. Which what happened with Sajar? I will say uh, before we do that, uh, you can roll your history because there's only one Lord in all of Northrend. And it was a pretty notable event, so you might just know okay. who he is. And his name what? is John Cena. No, what is it? <laughs> Lord Commander Duncan McCormick. Duncan McCormick. Uh, Lord Commander. That. Okay. Lord Commander, which is a very auspicious, auspicious, very notable rank, because it's not a commander that's a lord. It is a person who can command the lords. Oh. Meaning he has the authority to be like, I recognize. Your concerns, I recognize that we're a burden on your local region, but fuck you, I'm in charge, so you're gonna help us. Hmm. It's not an, it's not an authority you want to exercise uh spare like so sparingly. Mm -hmm. Like it's definitely something about like for example, the Lord Seeker and Lord Slayer. The reason they are Lord Blank is because back in the day, if anyone was found another like if a noble was found heretical, the Lord Seeker and Lord Slayer could deem them the target of a hunt. <laughs> so that's why they have the Lord title in front of the Seeker and Slayer. So it's like that. So it follows the same uh, vernaculars, or not vernacular, uh, nomenclature. Mm -hmm. So yeah, outside of. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, what happened to Sajar? He began his little uh, adventure by coasting through not quite the void, more like n a nothingness in between places, I suppose. Where he could observe his waking body um, floating through this space on an intercept trajectory until they eventually collided. And as they did, he was suddenly in uh, the skies over uh, Moranis, the provinces. And he realized that he was crashing towards the ground rapidly <laughs> uh, like a whale in a flower pot yeah uh, but instead of, of colliding and going splat he kept coasting through the 
uh, ground, much in the same way he had coasted through the sky and the clouds without really touching them, uh, until he eventually came into a hollow space underground, a cavernous region, where he plopped onto the ground in pitch darkness, where he couldn't really see much at all, except a faint glimmer of moonlight far above him. You also felt like shit. I also felt like shit with four degrees of exhaustion. That was rough. That's rough, buddy. Very rough, buddy. <laughs> to make a rough situation even worse, he saw his beloved, his... Uh, the... I guess the homing beacon? <laughs> that is Isadora. Uh, lying in a pool of her home blood. Uh, so he's like, oh shit, what do I do? Heal, potion, uh, ointments, the works. Everything. Just everything I got. Try to stabilize her. Uh, sh she's barely conscious. Uh, he manages to help her up. He realizes that, shit, there's some metallic pursuers coming this way. I gotta, I gotta get us out. And she says, to the surface, they won't follow. So he heads up start hurrying and realizes okay i gotta i gotta step it up haste on the both of them get the fuck out of there plop onto the ground outside realize that he's surrounded by a bunch of pretty terrifying looking dudes with like this they're on banner of, tribe <clears throat> yeah banner across their um one of their shoulders with like this half skull with an axe. Uh, oh yeah, that rem actually it. reminds me. Um, I was watching the VOD this past week and so on. Um, I will say the banner that you saw is not of the Order of Murmured Reach. It's similar in aesthetic and I guess design, if you want to call it that, but it's not the same banner. Okay, so that's a good. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're adjacent, they're parallel, but they're not the same. Just want to get that. Get that noon. I think someone said at some point, it's like, oh yeah, it's a banner of the uh, did, Order of the Murmur Breach. I was assuming. No, it's it's similar. I'll give you that. It was 100%, uh, like, there's a correlation, but not yeah, the same and, and, name. Uh, need not help me with the name, because I couldn't remember it. Note-taking, very good. That, that's Fei Chong. Yeah. Uh, they waited for the exact moment that... that... I dreaded, which was when the haste would run its course and I would be stunned. Um, and as that happened, there was a sudden sort of like plunge into darkness and screams and murder and mayhem and lots of lots of death and uh, courtesy of the Farloon Phantom that came to help. Uh, this Farloon Phantom, who I've never asked the name of, because it didn't occur to me to do that. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, you know, there are times where you might assume something or someone doesn't even have a name. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this this undead savior, question mark? Um, okay. Pulled me out of the sticky situation, along with this Adora. Uh, brought us somewhere. Uh, helped us with food and shelter. Gave us some time to rest and recuperate. And this is where um, Sajar realized that with some help from this Farloon Phantom, that whatever is preventing Isidore from waking up is not normal. And they said that I have to fix that. So that's high priority on Sajar's to-do list right now. Uh, and he's like, alright, I don't know where I am. I need a way home. I don't have cartographer's tools. I have a compass, but it will only point to what I want, which is Isadora. So can't really trust that either right now. <laughs> what do? So I rummaged through some of her belongings. <laughs> the compass is like, return to start. <laughs> Damn. Go back to Damn, I've done that three times so far. It hasn't, done it hasn't got me anywhere. Exactly. Uh, she does have a kit, a box. I'm like, all right, cartographer's tools, they got to be in here. I open it up, and what? And I find another thing that I've been looking for this whole time. The Eye of Shimandrax, the Iridescent Nocturnal. And I'm like, shit, I can't talk to Isadora right now. 
but I need to return this to the Horde, but I don't want to do that before I have a chance to talk to her about it. Agony for an hour. Then I believe that's where Chaplain Bellamy sent us that message. I believe so, yes. And then you got to hear your... No, no, no. I believe you got Silas's message first. Oh, and yes. then Chaplain Bellamy's. So yeah. I think that's when that's when you got Silas's message. Or that or a little bit beforehand. Yeah. When it's something. yeah. I don't know where I am. I'm okay. I will find you, I believe, was the gist of it. I sent you uh, that's recording next in the Nexus link. Right there. Uh, I'm a I'm alive. I don't know where I am. I will find you. Yeah. You um, probably had to spare ten words, but fuck them. Who needs them? Yeah. Um, eventually, um, Sajar decides that no, I have a duty to to do this. I can't uh, I can't be a coward about it. So I just got to do it. So he returned the Nocturnal to the Horde and gained an audience with Shimandrex. Which was a little intimidating. Uh, very different feeling from last time, but um, yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> Asked for a you favor. You got him in a happy mood. Yeah. As a person that gave him the eye back, you definitely are the source of said happy mood. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, hey, do you mind if I, um, you know... Can I get some help? Can I get some help, please? So he said, yes, I can provide help. And then I found the means to teleport myself and Isadora back to uh, you guys. Indeed. But before you guys all reconvened, uh, what happened with the Heartlander crew? Looks at only person in the Heartlander crew. <laughs> Sorry, I was I'm editing stuff. Um, uh, we essentially started packing up to go after getting a response from Sajar and all that jazz and stuff happened. Um, found out. I forget how. No, it was Tolis. After okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. D was acting weird. But we decided to roll out, um, got the the fee, talked to Evelina, then told us, um, told Silas that Dee's essentially under, I forget exactly what it was called, but it was like blood magic, right? She's being, no one's answering, so I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> oh, I, I, thought, I thought you were just more talking to yourself on that one, <laughs> like, like, right? Yeah. No, like, oh. like is, is that what it is? It's, she's being, um tracked i think it was blood to blood we're not <laughs> uh we're not telling zal <laughs> well, i don't get why not Zal's a pretty trustworthy individual like mine yeah we'll talk later champ <laughs> for sure oh, 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 pats really... you on the back <laughs> um we uh, go through the okay, forest oh shit oh, that's uh, fine. We go through the forest, we go through the town to that keep, Fuck, and we talk to... No, it was just guards. Just general guards. They were like, no one's here. <laughs> and then we went to, uh... We used their teleportation to go to Duvros. You guys reconvened in Duvros. Well, I believe it was the Sindel crew that made it first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then that was followed by the Heartland crew, 45 minutes. And then followed by Sajar, 45 minutes. We rolled three twice on those D6 rolls. That was really coincidental. But yeah, well, in the meantime, while the, you know, once the Sindo crew arrived, what were they doing, if anything? I just been shooting the shits for 45 minutes. Can you please stop attacking me? I swear to uh, God. I think this is where we kind of retroactively went and was like, hey, so the flower that we have in the bag. Um, we should probably sort that out. Uh, I can't remember what we ended up agreeing to do with her for the time being. I, I think we just put her in the garden of mm, Australia, right? No. No? Oh, you guys got a planter. big flower pot. <laughs> <laughs> big planter. <laughs> you guys requested some of the uh, arcane teleportation charged liquid. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So that was that. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that So the, the soil gives the nutrients. 
The juice gives the juice. Mm -hmm. The juice. Got the juice. Yeah. Anything else? Um. While well, waiting, uh, Alison. Go on. Uh, Alessandra tried to uh, uh, wingman for Delvet. Uh, sort hmm. of brought uh, Tolus into a conversation that he, I think Anushka was the uh, other person, right? Oh, there goes uh, no, because I was no. in my bed by this point. <laughs> no. Yeah, so the Harlander oh, oh, yeah, yeah, crew, yeah, yeah. crew arrived, and then you caught that Delvet was trying to dodge. Dolls. Right. I think you stuck Anushka in that conversation, even though Kersey had gone to bed. Yeah. Because um, we're they were discussing like uh, gun mechanics or something. I don't recall putting Anushka there, but fuck it, we'll say she was. Yeah. Okay. Because um, it was it was on, it wasn't le it wasn't really on guns. It was on arcane, mm -hmm. like design. Mm -hmm. Right. Remember I told you like there's a, man a class of you know manax theorem. Magic right. theorem, <laughs> yeah, which is absolutely something Anushka would have no fucking insight on. Not even yeah. a lot of intellectual mages take those fucking <laughs> classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Gun mechanics. Yeah, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely. Magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> magic. <laughs> ma magic <laughs> mechanics. That's gun mechanics. It was Vaso, yeah. Merica, Tolus, you, Blair, and now Anushka. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. Uh, well, regardless, uh, uh, yeah, Alexander invited Tolus to a discussion, and then totally, uh, oh, whoops, oh. not the gun. Anyway, uh, to not totally, her. um, <laughs> not her gun. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, ditched a, a conversation uh, for for Delta to kind of talk to Tolus. Um, what else happened before the Heartlander crew? Jumped well, this is dropped in. well, this is after the Heartlander crew dropped in. Tolus was the Heartlander crew. <laughs> Oh yeah, she was. Fuck. Yeah, so that's why I was saying the Heartlander crew dropped. This happened. What else happened? If anything, silence means nothing else happened during this time. I see. Very well. Guess not. Hmm. No, like happy reunions or shit like that. No bromos oh, yeah, that, from that Boston at all. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm quite curious though. Did did Anushka end, end up being a happy drunk or a sad drunk? So I do remember that being a thing before I left. We didn't get to the drinking part. We did. No. We didn't get to. The... <laughs> you guys had a quiet <laughs> evening. <laughs> Too yeah. much drama. I see. Okay. You guys had a quiet evening. It seems. Ah yes. Okay. I just but, um. <laughs> yeah. So Harlanda crew re met up with you know Sindelian crew, Twinsian crew, whatever you want to determine yourselves as, and then Sidar showed up who with Isidor in tow. Uh, caused quite the stir. Yes. What happened? Um, I arrived with Isadora in my arms. Um, was met by the. Um, <laughs> what was his name? The I don't yeah, say you guys never got his name. He was just a he was just a liaise, the teleporter of room liaison guard number seven. Yeah, I was about to say receptionist, but that sounded very cr cruel. <laughs> no, he's not a receptionist. Um, although he, he might complain when he gets drunk that yeah, that he's a glorified receptionist. <laughs> yeah, uh, he sent for some uh, medical staff aid, um, and she was promptly um, carried off to the. Um, what was that we stayed in? Like the the house, oh, yeah, yeah. the and uh, then we moved to the. Um, Guard well, well, let's not jump ahead Thanks. of ourselves. So you went to the foyer, regrouped yes. for your crew, barely noticing they were there. Correct. The adventure noticed. Medical uh, staff gave a rundown on Isadora. Yes. Gave her a clean bill of health. <laughs> you know in your heart of hearts what the real issue is. Mm -hmm. And they also gave Blair a general checkup and gave her a... Uh, a bit shallow, but a quick diagnosis, and give present the option of surgery. And you gave over the disc, Little, um, disc that uh, the Farland Phantom gave me to Kasai. Indeed, a disc in a very similar make and model as the one the twins and crew saw in the Tranquilarium. Yeah, the same and one that I tried to elevate them out of there. Indeed. I also tried to get Kasai um, a little bit more private attention uh, and told her about what the Farland Phantom told me concerning their relic and, and how it's been 
absconded with. Did you tell and her that? I did tell her that. Okay, then she probably would have a lot different reaction for the evening, but uh, do it now. Because <laughs> yeah. that's and pretty big news. Yes, because I, rem I, I told her that, and then I remember that um, the Farloon Phantom told me to notify Kasai and like, have her check on her tribe's relic to make sure it's safe. And then she's like, wait, safe? Because you, I remember you saying that Lyle had told her that it was safe. Lyle told her that it was safe, yes. What the... Oh my god. It was successfully stashed away per her parameters. Yeah. With nary a soul and, knowing uh, what those parameters are, except her and Lyle and the agents themselves. Yeah. But, yeah, you guys met up during this time with Brianna. She's doing well. You guys met back up with uh, now House Guard Lieutenant Samantha. She's doing well. Spick and span her new kit. Blair went off to the medical wing. Oriana accompanied her. Way outside for a bit. I think it was like a few hours, but, you know, a bit. Oh, speaking of a few hours. Uh, you guys remember how we had that conversation on a couple versus a few versus several? I brought that conversation up in my office. And it was a <laughs> apparently very divisive conversation. Oh, really? <laughs> We wasted yeah. like 40 minutes of work time discussing <laughs> vernacular on that, which was funny as shit to me. <laughs> what th thought you guys want to know that we are not the only people that have conundrum with those sets of words. It's funny <laughs> to me, at least. Uh, but yeah, so Oriana went with Blair to the medical wing and the rest of you got situated along with uh, Celine um, in the uh, upper floors of the house guard quarters, the fourth and fifth floors specifically. Uh, this is, they're all one floor, technically, but they have two floors in this floor. You know what I mean? Um, Vaso asked some people, some servants, uh, for supplies, drink, and food, which was promptly delivered, like DoorDash style, nice. uh, outside the door. And, uh, yeah, everyone's just sort of split up. Um, Sajar and Isadora went to the... went to a room, where he was mm -hmm. monitoring her for the entire evening and well into the night. Silas, uh, what did you talk with good old Sajar about? Uh, it's a good question. I don't remember how it started, but it was essentially on Silas checking in on Sajar. Fred, please feel free to fill in any info. <laughs> I yeah. Forget. I, I basically told Silas um, what had happened, and I described the scenario with uh, the Farloon Phantom and then how I had found Isadora and what they had revealed to me. So I gave them an in-character summary of what I told everybody mm. earlier today at the start of the recap. Hey, and then... I know Silas was gently urging him to sleep, which was not happening at that time, at least. Yes. It was being very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, essentially, uh, Silas spent majority of the evening with just sitting there with uh, Sajar. True, true, true. Uh, let's see. Meanwhile, Vasos all America were enjoying some drinks. Delva in their little social circle. But, um... What was Alessander and uh, Tolis and Kasai up to? What are they doing? They're in the same room. Zal told them to stop being nerds. But what, are they, what were they doing? Oh, fuck, what were we doing? <laughs> it, it, was, uh, it was something that required a roll, I remember that. Oh, God. Yeah. It was Arcana, which is why I uh, was... Uh, was remember, starting the disc. this one looks like an axe. That one looks like a uh, toilet. Oh, right, yes, the... <laughs> Uh, the the yeah. old Nevros lang uh, Nevros language that was on the um, uh, the lunar fracture. Did you correct um, to say Nevros just now? Yeah. But I are you just saying that because I just pointed it out? No. I can't tell. <laughs> hey, April Fool! No. Um, I'd say Nevros at first, but it is Nevros. It is Nevros. Alexander yes. certainly learned that. Um. But yeah, uh, old Navros uh, script that was on the, the lunar fracture. Uh, I remember uh, 
back before the Takani fight, uh, Alexander did roll uh, pretty good to r- remember the symbols. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. uh, Kasai brought it up to Tolus, uh, since Tolus is a bit of an egghead and might be able to uh, help us, uh, if not translate this, get a bearing on it. Uh, cool. And of course, Alexander needed to be there to sort of uh, tell uh, uh, little Tolus uh, what the symbols <laughs> looked like, what they were. A little tall. <laughs> I guess Tolis is little. She's only 17, I think. Yeah, she, she fits in a bread box. Yeah. Her birthday's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'll be a year older soon enough. But uh, yeah, you guys did uh, investigate the, I guess, etymology of a script that technically doesn't exist. But Sora does in the Dreaming City and also in the disc and stuff like that. It's very weird. Very weird. But you guys have a solid start. You know, it's something that it's like a combination melting pot of other languages or the progenitor of such languages. Who knows? Fun times. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Blair was getting, uh, I was going to say chop shopped. No, that's not quite the opposite. Uh, she was ha- getting surgery on her broken arm and with the combination of alchemy and magic and drugs, uh, you know, she's patched up. She should have usage of it. Well, she does have usage of it uh, now, but they obviously tell her not like to do it. Proper usage in a little while. She never could punch with it, uh, which is the most important part to her. But uh, yeah, she walked back with Oriana. What did their walk back look like? Uh, it basically boiled down to Oriana um, trying her best not to just make excuses, which is also Garth trying to pay attention to what I was trying to say. Um, I just explained, like, I forgot that you didn't know, and I am sorry that I deceived you in this way. <laughs> and, uh, the conversation basically boiled down to Blair <laughs> kind of pressuring Oriana to be like, who is Scavola? And, or, who is Scavola? Who is Scavola to you? And what is the situation? And it kind of came up as, um, like, this isn't a situation I entirely want to be in. But I don't really have a lot of choice, and I'm trying my best to help people in this case. Uh, it just doesn't look nice sometimes. Uh, it also led into a point where uh, where she was asking, hey, who is Kabola to you? Where Skabola was expecting just, like, completely lash out, just, like, be an absolute asshole. Like, she she is a monster, she is a uh, psychopath, blah, 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 all this stuff. And um, Oriana ended up doing the, the more kinder route. Uh, and basically equated her to like as as bad as she could be she is also the closest thing i actually have to a mother <laughs> which seemed to strike home to her to a degree that she did not think don't do that. don't hit me with the mickey mouse i'm terrified <laughs> i mean i i think it's for the better i hope it's that way when i have to post bust out this tool later i hope it's still that way <laughs> hopefully it probably hopefully. i don't know probably mm-hmm. Uh, there's one line um, specific in that I'll be able to point to, but uh-huh. um, again, it's for the better. Hopefully, hopefully for the better. There's no I, like that, I like that he's slowly collecting lines that I've said as Oriana over time. Just like I'm just gonna borrow this. And say well, this no, no, later. this isn't a matter of Oriana saying it. It's more over your description of oh, Oriana. Again, we'll, we'll 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 burn that bridge when we get to it. Um, like Julius Caesar. Uh, but uh, yeah, you managed to earn your way back into. <laughs> the good graces of Blair. Um, yeah, who was very sincere uh, about let, it. Let it be like, known, by the way. I accept your apology. I guess. Let it be known. We're going to go to the Blair tier list right now. Uh, like, you did go up. It's just other people also went up. Exactly. There's like three people that also <laughs> went up. Such as, so so the, it's, it's like putting Jackbox. You know, it's like, oh, sweet. I got 3,000 points. Okay, well, I got 5,000, 6,000, and he got uh, 3.5,000. So yeah. you're staying exactly where you are. <laughs> yeah, I think Silas went yeah, so up. Si- I, can, I can't imagine who. who Silas went who way agrees. up. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, so, I'm trying to say that. <laughs> Silas was like down good. here to non existent to up there. Yeah. It's like, holy God. Which, by the way, hey, we could probably jump to that point now. <laughs> well, okay. There was some small things with Blair, actually. Uh, on the way back, uh, Blair and Orion had their like little one on one conversation. Um, basically, going about like, what project is she working on? And she doesn't know. Uh, and there was, like, a run-in with Tolis where Blair got to see just a genuinely happy kid. <laughs> just, like, going through all this hell, and then they're still, like, cheery, happy, heartland kid. <laughs> Which... Yeah, I mean, especially given all Tolis has seen so far, <laughs> right? Tolis has 
basically witness a semi-apocalyptic like war between two fell gods just casually the day i the day if i decide to exercise the option of tolis losing her innocence her purity is the day something really fucking bad ha just happened or has happened don't right because that, that's like that, like the that, fucking that. nail in the coffin for a person who has such unshakable optimism and happiness and eagerness yeah that's the fucking that'll be the day. if you guys tpk maybe tolis will live as a hyper cynical npc that'll be funny as shit anyways <laughs> Um, yeah, that is a good point, Garf. Uh, this, the time, the evening, is when you guys would have had your one-on-one -on -one conversation. So, this is when Anushka would have had her talk with Blair and so on. I think a lot of people's talks with Blair, in retrospect. Um, you know, <laughs> Alessandra Ravasso, so on and so forth. So, the the evening did, did wind down to a close, or at least that's what you would think. Haha! -ha! That's when I tried to end session for the first time. We There are three more times I tried after that. Moving on. <laughs> It just kept happening. It, so it just fun. kept happening. No, no, it's, it's no. I, I, say that, I say that not in like a begrudging yeah. sort of like Arthur Fist sort of way. More in a sense of like I I find it amusing that that we de <laughs> not only just wanted to keep going. Of, uh, Return of the King. Yeah, basically. Like, like it ends like fucking five different times. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. But yeah, it's like I I appreciate both that everyone had the passion and enthusiasm to keep going, as well as had the endurance to <laughs> to keep going because mm -hmm. it, it fucking ended up being like nine hours or some shit. So yeah, that yeah, was, that I think was, you guys uh, were still playing when I got up the next morning. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, that's why Kirsty, you probably shouldn't have stayed up, or you would have been dead by yeah, by, the, yeah. by the next day. Um, but yeah, you guys uh, eventually went to bed. Um, Alessandra was the last one of the PCs up. All the NPCs except Blair had gone up. And then, Silas, you came out of uh, Sajar's room. This is, I said gone up, not gone okay. bad. Those are two different things. <laughs> um, you came out of Sajar's room. You spotted Kasai was also sneaky deaky eavesdropping. The beautiful thing about Navros. They have less <laughs> morals on doing shit. Um, that being said, it is interesting that Kasai sneaks, hides, because most Navros don't do that. Most Navros are like, Hey, bitch! Go behind the King of Sail fucking deck ya! Uh, you know what Nevros do hide, though? There are Nevros that do hide. There are certain... <laughs> there are certain <laughs> tribes that specialize in it. And there are... Like, it, it's a question of a, a Nevros to a Nevros of, like, where do you draw the line of your survival versus your tradition? Mm -hmm. One will have to bend or break for the other one. Some people die for their tradition. Others ditch their tradition and survive. Looks at Kasai. Uh, anyways. Hey, yo. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you were eavesdropping on Alessander and Blair. Why don't the two of you that were, uh, your characters were awake for that conversation, go through it. What did you talk about? Oh... Uh, Nina, I know it's a lie. Uh, it's you... not to go through. You don't have to go into hyper detail. You don't have to go into yeah, hyper detail. No. Nina, I, I wish you good luck. You have a lot more to talk about. Uh, so, <laughs> Alexander, uh, more like, I, can, I can actually summarize this pretty quickly. He basically asked her uh, what she will. First things first, he, he had his talk with her uh, that we had in the DM thing. Um, and he also kind of asked her, asked after what her project was. Uh, he learned that she didn't really know what she wanted to make. Uh, he sort of said, okay, well, uh, uh, hmm. I guess like the the thing of note that he said that was probably the most important was uh, make something that you would be proud of. Um, and uh, he, he asked after her father, and she uh, he said, "Oh, what would you say if I asked uh, asked you about your father?" She said, "Oh, uh, I would tell you to fuck off." <laughs> he wasn't surprised by that. Uh, and then I think he he kind of sat there with her uh, and ended up falling asleep in his chair. True Real dad behavior. energy. Real dad energy. <laughs> <laughs> you even have the like, comfy man chair too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, what about from Silas's end? You definitely caught some interesting insights, differing from Alexander. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, uh, I think, I think one of them, and this. Forgive me if um, I'm mixing up our conversations, which is what I was saying earlier. It's <laughs> when I was like, I don't remember. I don't remember which conversations were which. So that that clarifies some stuff. Um, <clears throat> I remember being told that Silas realizes that um, Blair has essentially two women that she'd want to be, and neither of them are options now. 
The first one is the Blair that sent her back to this mentality. So, old Blair. And then, I believe the other one was what she imagined her future would be like uh, before her wedding went uh, sour. Correct. Nice. And to her, both of those options are cut off now because, well, the wedding. <laughs> and uh, old Blair already sent her back, so clearly <laughs> that doesn't I have to work. Go to a, I have to go to a wedding tomorrow, and that's an... <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a thinking about the whole time. I'm like, that's like a no omen. <laughs> if I get killed on Sunday, um, you, you guys know what happened. It can't possibly Don't, be maybe. that bad. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Don't, there there will be an open bar, so who knows? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, other than uh, that, what else? If anything um, else, I don't really remember what other insights during that specific conversation that Silas got. Um, I oh no, I do because it got brought up go. again. Um, I was going to bring it up, but the, it got brought up a second time during the conversation Silas had with Blair, where Blair isn't letting herself be happy. She doesn't. She, she doesn't want to let herself to be happy. So that's sad. That's really sad. Yeah, I mean, you know, when if happiness gets you burned every time, then what's the point of being happy? You can. It's like you could go to a positive three, but plummet to a negative three, or you could just stay at a neutral negative one your entire <laughs> life and never plummet down to a negative three. You won't be able to experience the positive three, but you won't have to experience the negative three. <laughs> Economic feeling. Hold on, there. hold on now, he's got a point. <laughs> um, other You'll than that, that... if you average a positive three and a negative three, it comes out to zero, instead of a negative one. <laughs> interesting, interesting, very interesting. <laughs> um, I don't really remember any other insights that I specifically got from that conversation. I think you got the gist of it. Good. Um, after that, I don't remember exactly what happened, but Silas ended up being um, pulled by... Uh, Kasai to um, tell Blair to go to bed. She was like, I can't remember the exact words, but it was like, you know, try to get her to go to sleep. So Silas went. To she gave some that. blankets to bring down. And yeah. Stuff like that. Right. There were two blankets because one of them, Silas uh, laid over Alessander, who was, you know, probably snoring like a dad. <laughs> Fucking lawnmower no. snore, but <laughs> did, I, did we deny that <laughs> allegation or confirm it? It was we denied. denied. It. We denied it. Okay, just double check. Alessander is clear uh, airways. <laughs> Despite all you. the beatings he's taken, <laughs> <laughs> nasal and esophagus passages are perfect. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. And Oriana Especially... probably snores like a fucking truck. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, is getting hit by the fucking poison cloud thing that almost killed her? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Potato, potato, potato. Powder, it's, it's, it's his high charisma. When he says, not the face, people listen to him. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. I know they shoot you in the knees. <laughs> you. Anyways. Um, so, Silas started the conversation. Actually, I don't remember how the conversation started. Silas came up behind Blair and, like, uh, put the blanket down. Ooh, sorry, things are falling. The, towel, the blanket... Why are things falling? <laughs> Dedicated to Blair. <laughs> behind uh, her. I see you're doing a rendition of Blair's mental state. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's falling and breaking down. That's, that's crazy, huh? Oh my God. Can't, can't imagine that. Damn. That's um, Good RP. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what happened? What did you... What did you talk about? You, you put a blanket next to her. She says that she's not fucking gonna need it. You sat down next to the fire, all casual-like. Um... Oh, right, because there was a comment about Sass is like, um, I don't know, but I know you're probably used to it, but it's cold, so take it. And, uh, uh, then the conversation, I think it was, um, Blair that started it with, um, what was it? You're the saddest Heartlander I've seen. <laughs> Again, Blair has like two sample sizes, but she's but technically I correct. <laughs> um,. And then, I don't remember exact words that were um, said, but uh, it can be summarized. And they, they both discussed their um, value of family. And Blair essentially told um, 
Yeah, there's a fucking. Uh, I was waiting for you to say it. I was, I was waiting for you to say family. Because I said family, and as soon as I went, I saw it. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> um, and because I think it was, I think it was ruled that Silas was too scared of old Blair to actually, uh, Ask pry into. Yeah, pry into what happened with her yeah. in the past, yeah. so right. there was no lying that happened when Silas said, no, I, I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so they discussed. And with some more insights and persuasion checks and such, um... A lot of really fucking good checks. Again, you got, yeah. Across that evening with Blair alone, you got, like, three nat 20s. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> the dice Meanwhile, wanted Oriana, it. I have to use like three <laughs> birthday tones. Oh, yeah, you did. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. No, I'm, I'm glad it went to you because God, she needed that breakdown. <laughs> um, fucking, it, it ended breakdown? up being Silas telling her, um, why, like, why won't you let yourself be happy? I, I can't remember. There was like three things that they asked, and that was the. Why do you want to be miserable? And that I think... I don't know if this is before or after um, she freaked out. Uh, Silas had asked, is this what they would have wanted? Um, what you would have wanted or something? That was before the punch. That was before the punch. Okay. It's like, it's like Darkest Dungeon, you know? You were you guys built up Blair's stress. You hit 100. She had a mental breakdown. You know, normal stuff. <laughs> but you guys had to get her to that 100 level, you know? <laughs> so then... She got really mad. <laughs> no, she, she, uh, it, it was the last straw that broke the camel's back, and she punched Silas. And, um, please, Crash, do tell. What did, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, that's what, did she, what did she, uh, scream out? Let's see. She gave you a nat 20 punch to the face, doing you a oh. nice, nice 10 that, damage. That was fucking... Is... <laughs> Again, you're lucky she wasn't her new class, or else that would have been like 88 mm -hmm. uh, additional on top, which would be funny as shit. Majority um, of my health. <laughs> be funny as shit, though. And then she said... She screamed, which woke up everyone, which is a very mm -hmm. important note, mm -hmm. that she's not going to be hurt again. She did have this sort of mantra going into it that of us never again. Oh, never right. again. Never again would she hesitate. Never again would she be happy. Never again would she get hurt. And technically, never again would you guys go back to the Dreaming City. Because that sort of caused us some problems with her. But uh, that's a different story. But yeah, she punched you in the fucking face. Sent you flying back ten feet. Woke up everyone. Everyone burst out of the room. Sajar was pretty mad. Walking but it down he did stairs. simmer down by the time he you know, got to the... Uh, not the bottom of the stairs, but midway on the stairs. Yeah, I saw what was going on. I was like, I can't be mad at that. <laughs> Seeing Blair cry is uh, something a lot of people would have just lost money on if they were there to witness it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably some order of mat, like order around like I don't know, tens of thousands of gold. <laughs> Actually, no, probably hundreds. <laughs> but whoever <laughs> said Blair would cry would be fucking rich, dude. Someone straight up like bet their paycheck. <laughs> They'd be fucking rich. It's like I put down ten gold. I I came back out with thirty thousand. Damn, big Rickard win. Would be so fucking rich. R it would be Rickard, yeah. <laughs> Rickard is like it smells like broke bitch in here. But, but yeah, see in the Blair, did, um, hmm? Blair did. Um. Blair did uh... break down, and then you know, to put you guys put some more fuel to the fire. I guess the fire's already burned down at that point. Um, talking to her about. You know what her next plans are. Her her sorrows about being the last of her people. The virtues of being happy, even if it's at the cost of being sad. And um, then you guys did walk her to bed with yeah. a blanket. Yeah, because Silas draped the blanket over her shoulders, and I was like, "You should uh, go to bed." <laughs> yep. Um, everyone, Delta Core included, and even Zal, who was more than a little drunk, when we went to bed. Just had this sort of pained look on their face. It's like watching like a child, like just like get <laughs> get uh, reprimanded or something, right? It's like it's like you know it has to be done, but you just feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then uh, I believe Silas, you went to bed, and Oriana was there, mm -hmm. and then you tried to uh, 
r r you try to roll to cry. There you go. You roll to cry, and uh, you were only doing so under the stipulation that uh, if Oriana was asleep, or at least appearing to be asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, like a fucking psychopath. sociopath psychopath. she is. <laughs> yeah, psychopath as she is. Um, See, sometimes Coach having the Oriana. is useful. <laughs> I agree. Say. This is coping. <laughs> I agree. Um, so it's very important to be able to social to be asleep. <laughs> So that was fucking. <laughs> Let your arm droop as if you fell unconscious. Begin snoring slightly louder. <laughs> <laughs> Big brain. But you Slight, did catch Silas slightly. crying to themselves. Yeah. Yeah, the roll of wisdom check to avoid laughing, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that'd be a charisma check. <laughs> but I think. Rather thorough. Thorough recap. I believe that's where we are at presently. 